Hey everyone, Mrs. Spence here. And this week we are checking to see whether these ratios and these relationships between the two numbers that you're given are proportional. All right, so think back to our drawing of the character with a very large head and a smaller body, and then the character with a small head and a large body. And think about that being not proportional. Neither one of those characters were proportional. Um, and so we are checking to see whether or not these numbers that we're comparing are proportional. Do they grow at the same rate or do they shrink at the same rate? And if so, they are proportional. So if you look back at the notes that you were given on Monday, you'll have this notes page. And what you're going to do with me is at the bottom of each section, you are going to do the examples with me. So now, obviously, I don't expect you to draw this diagram and this graph perfectly. Um, just do a rough sketch. Okay, so if we are checking your, for proportionality, you'll be able to look at graphs, tables, and ratios and see if they're proportional. The other thing you can do is actually find the constant rate of proportionality or the constant of proportionality, which they call K in math. Um, from the different items that you've been given. So we're going to review that, do a couple examples. So jot these down in your notes with me. All right, so if you're checking to see if graphs are proportional, you're just going to eyeball them. If it is a straight line, if the graph line is straight and the graph line goes through the origin, so it has to be straight line, and it has to go through the origin, which is at zero, zero, then you will have a proportional graph. It has to be both, all right? So that is in your notes here. You might wanna underline it has to be both, okay? To be proportional. All right, and then to find the constant of proportionality, we're just gonna do your a Y coordinate divided by the X coordinate that goes with it and reduce it and that will be your constant rate of growth, okay? All right, so let's look at these examples. So this first graph, this is what in math we call a parabola. Is this a straight line? No. So because it does not meet the first criteria, we can go ahead and say that this is not proportional. Okay, and you can just do a rough graph like this and say, no, it is not proportional. All right, now what about this one? So we definitely see that it is a straight line. So that's great, it meets the first criteria. And then the second criteria, it has to go through the origin zero, zero, which ours does. So this one is proportional. All right, so you just need to do a rough sketch of a straight line coming from the origin in your notes and say yes. Okay, now let's find the constant. So the constant again is k equals y divided by x. So pick any coordinate here. I'm going to just start with this one. Remember that the first number is your x, the second number is your y, alphabetical. So we need to do y divided by x. So in this case, it's going to be 4 divided by 6. All right, so this one, obviously, we're not going to get a whole number. We're going to get a fraction, a reduced fraction. So this reduces down to 2 thirds. And this will be the same or should be the same if it's truly proportional as all the other coordinates, which is why you just need to check one. All right, so for this one, if we did 9 over 6, that also reduces to 2 thirds. And obviously this one here is already set up as the reduced form of 2 over 3. So yes, the constant here for this proportional line is 2 over 3. All right, so now let's take a look at how to check to see if tables are proportional. So if the numbers inside of the table are proportional, then you're gonna be able to look and spot a pattern. And that pattern is gonna use either multiplication or its opposite of division. All right, so either multiplication or division 
It's not going to use addition or subtraction. Okay. Um, and if there is a pattern of multiplication, it will also be repeating that same number that's being multiplied or divided every single time. The trick for this one is you need to check all of them because sometimes they'll be proportional and then there'll be one in there randomly that does not follow the pattern and then it gets you. Okay. And then the other thing you can do is compare numbers within your table and set up unit rates. And if you have unit rates that are all consistent all the way down, then your table is proportional as well. Now I will say that this is my preferred method if you're given a table because looking and setting up unit rates for every single one of them just feels a little tedious, but whichever way you prefer is what you should do. Okay, remember unit rates will have a denominator of one. All right, so let's look at our tables first and then we'll go back and find the constant on those. All right, so we have two tables down here. And on yours, just jot down the numbers that, of course, X and Y will help you as well. Um, and we're going to check this first one. So we're looking for a pattern using a multiplication or division. So we're going from smaller number to larger number, and we're comparing the X and the Y. We're not going X to X or Y to Y. We're going from X to Y, two separate units. All right, so x is 5, y is 15 here. It grows, so we know we're talking about multiplication. 5 times what gives you 15? 3. So let's check and see if this multiplying by 3 is the pattern used for the next one. All right, so 7 times what gives you 21? 3. So that one works. Keep checking. Don't stop here. 8 times 3 is 24, and 12 times 3, is it 36? It sure is. So we have a repeated pattern of multiplying by 3, and that is proportional. This whole set of numbers, when enlarged by 3, gave you this set of numbers. This would produce a straight line if you graphed them. And if you continued your line, it would go through the origin. All right, let's check this one. 2 to 12, we're getting bigger, so we are going to multiply. 2 times what gives you 12? 6. All right, let's check this one. 3 times 6, does that give you 18? It does. Let's check the next one. 5 times 6, oh, does not give us 25. So good thing we kept checking because the first two worked, but that one didn't. And even this last one works because 10 times 6 is 60. But because we have one rule breaker in here, this is not proportional. So we would need to say no to that one. Okay, can't find a constant here because right here, it would be 5 times 5 gives you 25. And that is not a constant pattern. No constant exists for this whole table. But over here, the constant is just the pattern that you found. So our constant is that it was multiplied by 3. Now, if it was divided, you would have a fraction here. But we just have a multiplication here. Um, let me... All right, sorry about that. Okay, so finding the constant from a table. The number multiplied each time consistently, or the pattern, is the constant of proportionality k. But you could also do the same thing that you did for the graphs, where you follow the formula that y divided by x will give you your k. So let's check that over here as well. All right, so k equals y divided by x. If we check this, it would be 15 divided by its partner over here, 5. And if you reduce that, it is 3. And you could do that all the way across here. 36 divided by 12 is also 3. So the constant is truly 3 here. Okay. And then the last thing is if you're just given ratios. 
Okay, there's three different ways that you can check to see if ratios are proportional. So each ratio will have the same unit rate. So if you set up a unit rate and you compare the, all their unit rates, or if they're just comparing two, you compare the two unit rates and they are the same, then you have a proportional relationship. You can also do cross multiplication. So if your cross products are the same, then you have proportional ratios. All right, and there's one other way that I'll show you, and it has to do with finding patterns, kind of like at a table, but I'll show you that one at the end. Okay, so for this one, either of them can be true to be proportional, so I'm gonna show you both ways. So with this first one, 64 over four and 24 over 1.5, we're gonna see if they're proportional. So the first way says to check their unit rates. So to remember to check unit rates, you just go straight down, remembering that this means divide. So 64 divided by four, that would give you 64 divided by four, 16 over one. And then do the same thing here, 24 divided by 1.5, you go straight down with division and you get 16 as well. So 16 over one. Are these unit rates the same? Yes, they are. So we would say, yes, this is a proportion or it's proportional. Okay, now the other way is to use cross products. <clears throat> so with cross products, it's using cross multiplication to solve. So I'm gonna come over here and you do four times 24. So four times 24 is 96. And then we do 1.5 times 64, and that is also 96. So because our two cross products are equal, then we do have a proportional relationship. So you can do either method, whichever way you prefer. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so the first way again is to turn these into unit rates. Okay, now this is gonna be a little bit trickier because we have a smaller number on top, but we're still gonna go straight down. So four divided by seven, and then you're gonna put that over one. So four divided by seven is actually a re, like a, irrational number here. It goes on for a little while. So I'm just going to do 5.57 over one. Okay. And then eight divided by 12, still going to give me a decimal here. We're going to put it over one. And with that, you get 0 0.6 repeated. Okay. And these are not the same. So we do not have same unit rates here. Therefore, these are not proportional. Okay, and you can also check it with cross multiplication, which in this case seems to be easier, especially because you're dealing with uh, smaller numbers on top. Okay, so seven times eight is 56. And four times 12 is 48. So right here, we can very quickly and easily see that these are not equal, therefore not proportional. All right, and then the last one here, again, you can do the same thing where you find the unit rate and then you can cross multiply. I'm just gonna do cross multiplication and then I'm gonna show you one other way here. Um, I'm not gonna find the unit rate on these, but if you do this cross multiplication, 24 times five is 120. And then eight times 15 is also 120. We have the same answer for our cross products. Therefore, this is proportional. All right, and then I wanted to show you one other way. Now this will work if you look from here to here, 
How big did it grow from 8 to 24? We did 8 times 3 gives us 24. And then if we grow this one, it also is 5 times 3 gives you 15. So if you get one like this where its own ratio is reducible, or you can see that it grew from one to the other, this is, this is like looking for the pattern from a ratio table, then you can see that, yes, that would also be proportional. All right, so that is how you determine whether or not something is proportional from graphs, from ratio tables, and also from ratios themselves, and also how to find that constant of proportionality or K. Which way do you prefer between the uh, tables and the ratios? I know for me, my preference is looking for the repeated pattern. And my preference also is the cross multiplication here rather than finding unit rate. All right, now it's your turn to practice.